Warning, in this video I will talk about spoilers to the ending of the Attack on Titan manga. There will also likely be spoilers in the comments, so if you're not caught up and don't want to be spoiled, I would recommend leaving the video now. So the last chapter of Attack on Titan release, and there was a lot of people angry about it. The manga ended in a very safe way, and there were some plot points that didn't really resolve the way we readers wanted it to. I was quite okay with how the manga ended, and I'm going to explain some of my theories that I thought up or saw that could help explain some plot holes that some people pointed out. I'm going to say before I get started that I do wish Isayama took a darker and riskier route with the ending. The ending wasn't exactly how I wanted it to be in the end, but I'm still satisfied with what we got. The first theory I want to put out there revolves around the power of the founding titan. The reason I bring this up is because in the last chapter, Aaron explains to Armin that it was him who sent Diana to eat his mom so that she wouldn't eat Bert. At first I was really confused as to how he did this since he wasn't touching royal blood at the time while Maria fell. I also don't buy the fact that he used royal blood connection while in paths to force his younger self to make that decision as paths is in a state that's not living or dead. And there wasn't a time I could think of that Aaron used past to force a non-former attack titan holder to do something. Instead, my theory is that the founding titan has the power to control titans and a royal blood connection isn't necessary to use its powers, and instead is quite the opposite. If a person with royal blood comes into contact with the founding titan, then they can use the finding titan's power to control titans. The instances where we see Eren use the powers of the Founding Titan include when he touches Diana during his whole kidnapping by Reiner and Bert, and this could be Diana, his stepmom, using the Founding Titan to help out Eren. The other instances is when Zeke wants to use the Founding Titan power to carry out his No More Eldian Baby plan, and he's the one who's trying to make the connection with Eren. The Founding Titan has historically been someone with royal blood, and that may seem like the Founding Titan user must have some sort of royal blood connection, but it's only been talked about and never really confirmed. If we take a step back and say any person with a Founding Titan can use its power, then that would explain how Aaron was able to control Titan Diana to not attack Bert. So why would the rumbling stop when Zeke was killed? I believe Aaron did this on purpose so that Levi could get revenge on what Zeke did to the scouts and finally keep his promise with Erwin. After Zeke was killed, Eren used that as an excuse to stop the rumbling so that Armin and Mikasa would become the heroes of the world as he told Armin in the last chapter. The next topic I want to talk about is Eren as a character. In the final chapter, people wanted his point of view and exclamation as to why he went through with the rumbling and committed a genocide. What we got was his talk with Armin saying that he wasn't really sure why he wanted the rumbling and breaks down saying he wants to be with Mikasa and everyone else. This made a lot of people angry, but this is how I see it. Aaron is still a kid at heart who wants to, in his own words, have friends live a long life. He felt like a slave to the only way he saw it in past to achieve this happiness for as many of his friends as possible and is willing to do whatever it took so that the people he cared for would have a happy ending, even if that meant committing a genocide. There doesn't have to be some sort of deeper meaning to his actions. He wanted to protect and save his friends, and was willing to stomp over anyone in his path. Like in the beginning of the story, Aaron proclaimed how he was going to kill all the titans to get revenge and protect the ones he loved. In the end, it wasn't just titans, it was also humans that he was willing to step over. Deep down, he's still this naive kid as he was at the very beginning of the story. Another topic I wanted to bring up is why Ymir ended up choosing Mikasa to be the one to help set her free. A lot of people didn't like how Ymir let all these terrible things happen in the world just because she was in love with Carl Fritz who was abusive to her. He did some terrible things to her like domestic violence and cutting off her tongue, but she still defended and loved him. This doesn't make a lot of sense to a lot of people, but these toxic relationships very much do exist in the real world. There are people who are domestically abused by their partner, 
but will still defend and be with them just because they love them. This isn't a common thing, but relationships like this do happen in the real world, and I think Ymir falls into this category of the darker type of relationships. So why did she choose Mikasa? The reason I think is that Mikasa had a similar relationship to Eren, where Eren didn't always treat her the best and even told her he tr hated her. She is also sort of a slave via the Ackerman bloodline, in which they instinctively protect the founding titan. However, she saw in past that even though she loves Eren so much, and a slave to her own bloodline, she was able to push past that and kill Eren, who she loved very much. Seeing this in person helped Ymir realize that sometimes you just got to hurt the person you love the most to do what is best. Seeing Mikasa do what she had failed to do gave her the closure she needed to move on and set the world free of the Titan curse. The final point I want to discuss is people arguing nothing has changed in the world. Paradise Island is still ramping up for a war with the rest of the world, and people see this as a sign that the rumbling didn't actually make things better. I disagree with this view on two points. 1. The Eldians of Marley and the Eldians who helped stop the rumbling are now part of the New World Alliance. The racism the world had on Eldians has gone now, as they are now living as normal citizens in the New World. Secondly, the New World Alliance has made our main characters, John, Reiner, Armin, as these ambassadors of peace to try to form a peace agreement with Paradise Island, which hasn't been done before. This would have never happened without the rumbling, and with the story of being queen and sending letters to Reiner, John, and the crew, I infer that they are going to be successful in forming this alliance, and there will be peace, at least for this moment in time. The rest of the world isn't afraid of Paradise Island because of their devil bloodline anymore. They're afraid of them because they're actual a credible military threat, which is completely different from racism before. And to say that nothing has changed seems pretty absurd to me. Is the ending perfect? No. There are plenty of things I wish went differently, such as after bearing Eren, I wish Mikasa would have moved on. And why was Levi, Gabby, Falco, and Onion Compone? All together at the end, that group didn't really make sense to me. And in general, I do wish it ended in a darker, riskier tone, but people saying this is one of the worst manga endings ever is something I don't agree with at all. Anyways, let me know what you think about the ending in the comments below. Let me know if I have anything wrong or disagree on any of my viewpoints, or if you do agree with some of the things I said. Thanks for watching, subscribe for more content, and I will see you on the next one. Later.